it's a life on baby joe take yeah. two we've just done all this just now and uh, one of the microphones was turned off so we haven't got any sound at all got a perfect intro but nothing so but there you go anyway i hope uh, everybody's coping with this uh, lockdown I know we're finding it quite hard, yeah. this one, aren't we? This is our third lockdown in the UK, if you include the Tier 4 lockdown. And uh, we are struggling a bit now. Uh, and like most vloggers, there isn't really a great deal to video. But we have got some footage for you. We did, um, <laughs> we did go across to the pump out, uh, to the fueling arm rather, for a pump out because we were getting pretty full and it was getting desperate. Yeah. And we'll go no further than that. Um, and I looked across to the fueling arm and it was a bright sunny day and I thought oh the ice has melted I could see ripples on the water and and it looked really nice I thought right I'm going for it so we got the boat ready How and wrong we were. <laughs> as soon as I put her into gear I could hear the ice oh. and I thought no no the ice was actually a couple of it about an inch under the water and uh, you'll hear from on the clip that um, Ian very kindly recorded of us coming back from the yeah. fueling arm you'll hear the ice cracking oh, underneath the bow it was horrendous it sounded like world war three in the boat but there but you go no damage to the blacking actually no, on actually, this occasion quite surprised the blacking that they did in uh, blackwater marina at ellesmere survived the ice there's no marks on it there's no bare steel so that's good thank god for that one <laughs> <laughs> but the to add insult to injury, the next day was another sunny day and uh, the ice had melted completely. So had we left it another 24 hours, which I don't think we could have done, no. uh, <laughs> there wouldn't have been any ice. So I went back across there uh, and filled up with diesel um, and then came back. Now, we've had a lot of comments coming through. So I think, Chris, you had loads about you being a TA, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, being a TA. There's quite a few TAs that obviously must watch our <laughs> vlogs. So I thought... Instead of a cruise in the boat, we'll have a cruise in the car to my work for a change. <laughs> it's only a short clip, but we may have well have been on the water because there was so, so much, much flood flooding <laughs> and that to go through. Yeah. So I hope you enjoy it. It's only a short little clip. Yeah, and I have to say at this point that we were using the little DJI pocket yes. camera that Chris loves, and it made it look like I was doing a rally cross. Because it made the car look like it was going so fast, but I can assure no, you, no, you weren't. We weren't. <laughs> we weren't. <laughs> so, if you've got your cup of tea right. or your coffee or I your have... drink, and you're settled in the uh, comfy, hope you enjoy the video.
my cock. see that in this light <laughs> the sun's out and it's starting to thaw the jetty just look at that that is amazing you wouldn't think that very low sunshine like that would have that effect but you can see now why it does it off the water can't you look at it we've been very impressed with gary's flag bowl i decided I'd like to have one on Amy Jo. So I got some stainless steel tubing, which was a little bit too long. So my first job was to uh, chop a foot off. The thing was to add to the pole the flag mounts. And I managed to get these rotating flag mounting rings, which are very similar to the ones that Gary's got on Chuggerbug. And what I've done is I've fitted them temporarily onto the pole. But what's really good about them is they do swivel and they're held onto the pole quite simply by an allen key. So I'll put one halfway down and the other one up there. So we want now some zip ties. And now all I need to do is to mount the pole onto the swan neck. And there we have it. That's it, job done. There it is, the final job. Now the bottom one, I can adjust to suit the size of the flag, but, and uh, please forgive the, uh, the St. George's Cross. But, uh, that's the only flag I've got at the moment. <laughs> it's a lovely day, hardly a breath of wind. And we went across for a pump out yesterday in the ice. The ice is now cleared, so time to go over for some diesel. Just reversing Amy Jo out the mooring and uh, pulling onto the fueling arm, all 400 yards over that away. That's it, we're now on the fueling arm, just waiting for the office to come out. And uh, we'll top up with diesel, uh, probably just about 20 in the tank, 
and I'll fill the two jerry cans up and that'll give us about 30 litres. That should see us for a few days, but what a glorious day. That's it. Start off with a beautiful sunrise. past the second most popular attraction in the Cheshire area which is the ice cream farm. Then I quite like the journey to work because yes. it's all along the country roads. Steve's taking me today because he needs the car to do other things today. Yeah, essential trips like getting coal and, and supplies, bread. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I could lift them, let alone carry them. No, that's your job. Yeah. <laughs> and we're quite lucky that our daughters live in the house, so we can have bulk oh, deliveries of coal. Huge bag of luck. Yeah, we can have bulk deliveries of coal to the house, which saves us money. And then it's just a case of every now and again going to the house, picking up a few bags, Bring them back to Amy Joe. Yeah, this is sometimes what I have to contend with dog walkers on one side of the road, runners on the other. <laughs> you just hope you don't meet traffic coming the other way. We have a little, little farm shop coming up on the left there, the manor farm shop. And it's also got its own caravan site, which there is actually somebody staying in. There's two caravans, and each night there are lights on, so someone's staying in the caravans. Well, obviously self-isolating in their caravan. Now, I didn't think people were supposed to be able to stay in their second home, but there you go. Unless they do live in a caravan. <laughs> some people do. We know some people do. If you remember Captain Gary Phillips did. Yeah, he lived in here for a year while his boat was being built, didn't he? Indeed. This junction here <laughs> is like going from the Middlewich branch onto the Shropshire Union by Barbridge. There's huge lorries and you never know what's coming along next. So, here's our little tight bend which is absolutely lethal when it's icy. Um, I skidded and the tree is just put there just to go into or make you stop I think if you are <laughs> hit by the ice. Not, Fortunately I've not hit it. Not, not the sort of buffer you want to hit really. <laughs> no, no. And, this. and then this is the other tight bend. And believe it or not the lane narrows after this. <laughs> yeah. And the road, because of the amount of rain that we've had, is absolutely <laughs> flooded. It just gets deeper each day. Look at that round the side. <laughs> oh well, one clean car not. <laughs> Check brakes. <laughs> yeah. So this is the entrance to our senior school because due to lockdown we tried to stay at our little infant's apartment by the Duke's estate but we have no Wi-Fi so we've had to decamp our children up to here but it is a lovely building. Can I go round?
Time now for our non-boater section, and in this week we're going to start looking at solar panels. For, for narrow boats, there are three main types of solar panels used: monocrystalline solar, polycrystalline, and thin-film amorphous silicon solar panels. So let's look at each one in turn. Monocrystalline solar panels, or mono SI as they're called, are made from monocrystalline silicon and is the purest one. You can easily recognize them from the uniform dark look and the rounded edges. The silicon high purity causes this type of solar to be one of the highest efficiency rates, with the newest ones reaching over 20%. Monocrystalline panels have a higher output, occupy less space, and last the longest. Of course, that also means they're the most expensive of the bunch. Another advantage to consider is that they tend to be slightly less affected by high temperatures compared to the polycrystalline panels. Polycrystalline panels, or polysci, you can quickly distinguish these panels because they are of the type of solar panel that has squares. Its angles are not cut and it has a blue speckled look. They are made by melting raw silicon which is faster and cheaper process than that used for monocrystalline panels. This leads to a lower final price but also a lower efficiency of around 15%. Lower space efficiency and a shorter lifespan since they are affected by hot temperatures to a great degree. However, the difference between mono and polycrystalline types of solar panels are not so significant and the choice will strongly depend on your specific situation. The first option hires a slightly higher space efficiency at a slightly higher price, but power outputs are basically the same. Thin film solar panels. If you're looking for a less expensive option, you might want to try to look into thin film. Thin film solar panels are manufactured by placing one or more films of photovoltaic material such as silicon, cadmium or copper to a substrate. These type of solar panels are the easiest to produce and the economies of scale make them cheaper than the alternatives due to less material being needed for its production. They are also flexible which opens a lot of opportunities for alternative applications and is less affected by high temperatures. The main issue is that they take up a lot of space, generally making them unsuitable for residential installations. Moreover, they carry the shortest warranties because their lifespan is shorter than the mono and polycrystalline types. However, they can be a good option to choose among the different types of solar panels where a lot of space is available. So how does a solar panel work? Well, simply put, there are two layers of silicon, one negative layer and one positive layer, and when the sun hits the solar panel, electrons move between the layers and cause uh, a flow of electricity or a current. That current is then passed down through a controller to charge batteries or run domestic appliances. A typical assembly of solar panels looks like this. This is Amy Jo. She has four solar panels. Each solar panel generates 165 watts of solar power, giving a total of 660 watts of solar power. Well, there you go. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. As I say, short, sweet and simple, but uh, under the circumstances, that's the best we can do. But we'll, try, we'll keep trying to get the vlogs out when we can. And I uh, hope you're staying safe and well. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to... Give us a thumbs up. Yeah, and if you want to see more of our videos... Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want notifications of our next videos... Press the bell icon. There you go. I hope you don't mind us doing that, Mark. I remembered. <laughs> she remembered that. So, yeah. So, uh, keep safe, folks, and we'll see you next time on Life on Board, Amy Joe. Bye. Bye.